What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Retro Review. I am the Bearded Geek. Joining me as always is Mikey the Freak. What's up? And joining back again from his illness, Bebo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Today we will be doing Short Circuit from 1986. And before we really get started going in this video, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, tell us what you'd like us to review in the future. Uh, but for now, Bebo, tell us a little bit about Short Circuit. So this is a story about number five, one of a group of experimental military robots, which undergoes a sudden transformation after being struck by lightning. <laughs> he develops self-awareness, consciousness, and a fear of reprogramming that awaits him back at the factory. With the help of a young woman, number five tries to evade capture and convince his creator that he has truly become alive. All right. Uh, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> it's quite long. So, yeah. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a family version, a family friendly version of Terminator. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> in, in reverse, whereas we're hunting them as opposed to them hunting us. Right. <laughs> um, I would like to mention that I thought the cast was pretty decent for the flick. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you got Steve Good. Gutenberg, who plays Newton Crosby, who is the guy who developed the programming and actually, you know, made the robots that mm -hmm. you see in the movie. Um, Ali Sheedy plays Stephanie Speck. She's the, um, you know, the female lead in the movie that number five uh, finds his love way interest. onto her little, yeah, <laughs> his love interest and Steve Gutenberg's love interest. Go figure. Um, you have Fisher Stevens playing Ben. Um, <laughs> fake trying, Indian. Yeah, fake <laughs> Indian is the best way to describe that. Um, but I do love how he plays it off because in the line he goes, "Where are you from originally?" And he's like, "San Francisco." He goes, "Oh no, your ancestors." Oh, then Pittsburgh. Yeah. Hey, I, I do <laughs> like how they make fun of it in the movie. Yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. and he's real funny in the movie. Um, along with Steve Gutenberg, another um, police academy alum who's in this is G. W. <laughs> Bailey playing uh, Scroder. Uh, who's so like the the he, head he of played, the department yeah. after him. He played the exact same person. Exact same role. He is exact the exact same, exact same person. I swear Lieutenant from, Harris was in the military. Yes. From the whistle to the freaking speaker, uh, it's him. <laughs> it's Lieutenant yeah. Harris. It, it was yelling all day and... long. Because I watched that movie, and I mean, it's been a while since I've seen this. Um mm -hmm. You know the original and i'm sitting there and i'm watching i'm like it really is harris for police yeah. academy like there's yeah. no doubt about it he's just in a different uniform but it is the exact same guy and what's funny is they were in the middle of filming three and four they were right in between back in training and citizens on patrol <laughs> in 85 86 so <clears throat> so they like i don't think he ever broke character I think he thought it was another police academy, like a, a sub police academy movie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, Steve, Steve's in this? Yeah, let's it's, it's, uh, it's another police academy. We'll do it with robots. So, what were your takes on it? What did y'all like and dislike about it? Oh, uh, I'll go first. Um, I I did not like the fact that it. it it did seem like a police academy and it was kind of, a, it was irony really. Yeah. Um, you know, he had the same argumentative, uh, you know, character, um, very, uh, what they call that word, um, controlling, like it was his way. I was, he was, he was, he wanted to kill the robot the whole time. So there was no mm -hmm. compassion and understanding. He just, once they killed the robot, they, they were gloating and they were treating it like it was a trophy. So I thought that was kind of, um, um you know kind of harsh for the for the movie <laughs> but you know we understand the concept you know because they were the the robots were made to to kill you know we were mm -hmm. we were towards the end of the cold war um you know so it was always between us and russia in the yeah. 80s so i i think this movie went straight you know what are we doing as a country to combat the russians so why not build robots that um that can kill 
you know, that are mm -hmm. pretty much indestructible or somewhat indestructible, which they weren't. All they were were robots. So any missile would have blown them yeah. up. So, yeah. so it, it's not like it would have been effective at all in any kind of military. So I thought that was kind of dumb on, on that um, on that spark. But it, it's very a stereotypical type movie from the 80s when it comes to military, at least. Yeah. Because it was always about, you know, Russia and, mm -hmm. and um, America and fighting and Cold War. They did way too many movies in the 80s. Yeah, they did. And I think it was just kind of to, to give us the knowledge of what's going on and kind of tell us what's going on without actually telling us what's going on, <laughs> you know. Um, so I, I really didn't like the military aspect of the movie. I think they could have went a different route. Um, but like I said, that's what the, the robots were for. Um, I, the comedic aspect of Johnny Five was funny. The sarcasm and the humor mm -hmm. and the jokes. And I think that's really what made the movie. Um, Steve Gutenberg, he was in the hottest of his career. I, you know, I, I, I don't really like Gutenberg as an actor, but... Um, he just had those roles so it was very fun to fun to watch at first and kind of relive their careers and and what was going on uh but i i just didn't like the military type atmosphere and how it went towards the end with the gloating and and um there was excitement no like revelation that they, or anything yeah yeah so the, mm -hmm. they, you know they weren't they were very excited you know about blowing up johnny five at that point in that part of the movie but i just i don't know it was it it wasn't hard to follow um but it just wasn't as entertaining as what i thought it was or used to be back in it the was day. entertaining yeah. back then but not now you know so yeah so that I, was my uh, take on it i had a hard time connecting to any of the characters besides you know uh, number five uh, I, I didn't see them as a character in the movie. Um, mm. I, like you said, uh, you know, the military guy, he, he was the same person from police Academy, even the director of the, uh, military, uh, station, the, the guy who, uh, was running the whole thing. All I yeah. could see, all yeah. I could, yeah. All I could see is the attorney from my cousin Vinny. No more questions. Yeah. Anytime that he spoke, I expected him to stutter. So yeah. it, <laughs> and like every role I can remember ever seeing that guy in, he's always played that guy who's <clears throat> should have authority but doesn't but have does, authority yeah. because right. he's got no like true self backbone. You know, yeah, he yeah. you don't have a backbone. And yeah. he played that role again in this movie. Like I said, I didn't connect with him. I didn't connect with uh, the commander for the army. I didn't connect with Steve Gutenberg's character or mm -hmm. Ali Sheedle. It's it's Sheedy. Sheedy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, A Ali Sheedy. I didn't connect with her. Um, I don't. And it wasn't on their part. I think it was the storytelling in general. Uh, I connected with the robot because it was funny. It, you know, you can, it, I don't know. It seemed like the robot had better acting in this movie than <laughs> the actors. If I that makes sense. That. If that makes any sense whatsoever. And it took, yeah. it took um, uh, quite a bit of people for the robots to actually work in this movie, but I just didn't connect with hardly anything. Uh, the only funny it was funny, but the only quotable line for this whole movie is, <laughs> hey, laser lips, your mother was a snowblower. That was really <laughs> about it. Um, uh, and and I, before we watched this movie, as I was saying to these guys before we went on air, I I remember more from Short Circuit 2 than I remember from this movie. Uh, you know, I waited the whole freaking movie to get to no Los Nocos. You know, Los Locos. <laughs> but it, ne it never happened. So, but this yeah. movie was kind of, you know, in my opinion, almost forgettable. I mean, it wasn't as good as I, was not as good as I remember it to be. If, uh, well, yeah. I would, I would say forgettable might be a tough word because remember uh, the movie Wally, -E, you know, that so Wally -E was actually a takeoff short circuit character, Johnny Five's character. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so they tried to have that same effect with the kids. 
that Disney did. Um, so it, it kind of relives our childhood. It's going to be hard to re- forget about Johnny Five. And then when the song Who's Johnny comes on, mm-hmm. that, that's the first movie I think about when that song comes on. Well, yeah. I get it, but this, Johnny. This, <clears throat> movie, this movie specifically, though, um, I feel yeah. it to be almost... Maybe not, maybe forgettable is a little too harsh, but it's not memorable because I don't, when I watched it, yeah, Yeah. when I watched it, I did not remember half of anything that happened in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you guys both on that. Like, it, when I watched it, and like I said, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. Um, I'm used to watching the second one if I end up watching Mm -hmm. a short circuit movie. Um, It was, not as good as i remember the acting was real bad it was real cheesy it was Mm -hmm. it like um like kevin said the the robot was somehow had the best acting the entire thing (laughs) and what (laughs) i did love about the movie yeah yeah and what i did love about this movie which like you said it's very it's like wally because wally was adapted off of it is my favorite thing in the movie was watching him become kind of himself mm-hmm. the robot or johnny number five uh trying to you know before he he's craving input as he calls it in the movie and it's just him wanting more and more knowledge mm-hmm. but what i love is watching it this the development of his character if you will going from almost newborn to just full of information in a matter of like three days or whatever it is Mm-hmm. But, you know, him being, abs- you know, it starts off with him flicking a light switch on and off, trying <laughs> yeah. to figure out what that's about. Then he sees a butterfly at one point and he's you oh, know, mimicking butterfly. that with his little eyebrow things. Mm-hmm. And then he, uh, you know, and then after he starts reading and watching the TV, I did love the fact that he fell in love with the Three Stooges and he reprogrammed the three <laughs> other robots yeah. to make him look like, <laughs> look like them. But it was... It was very sad to me, the actual acting in it, because I feel like the movie could have done a lot better than it did, even for back it, then. But it, Ali Sheedy's character to me was like, I don't know, it was like throwing uh, somebody who had never acted a day in their life in the role. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Steve Gutenberg, he just played a little nerdy guy, which he's done before, but I mean... He, it wasn't anything special. It was nothing like you guys said memorable in it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it what was, would you guys say in regards to like rating the movie? I'll go. I'll start this off. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, you know what? Let's hold off on ratings uh, right now and let's do a little bit of fun facts and, and trivia. Let's do some trivia. We love yeah. your trivia, Brian. <laughs> So, the what I love is that. The finger. Don't you mean? Well, I love phone home. <laughs> um, <laughs> the actual budget of the movie for back in this time was kind of high. It was fifteen million, oh, wow. and one point four million of it was spent on the creation of Number Five alone. Jesus. So 1.5 million to make the robot and with everybody it took to, you know, actually make the robot move, make it do what it did and stuff like that. I thought that was a lot. Um, Now, the laser that he fires, if you listen closely (laughs) Mm -hmm. to it, Mm -hmm. is the same effect as the Ghostbusters proton packs powering up. Yes. Yes. Do. Yeah. Do. Ray. Ray. Egon. 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 <laughs> um, it was also filled in the town. The, the movie was filled in the town of Astoria, Oregon, where they also filmed mm-hmm. uh, the Goonies. Mm-hmm. So I like that because you can kind of tell that. In Kindergarten Cop. Oregon. In Kindergarten, in kindergarten, kindergarten Cop. cop. Kindergarten, in kindergarten Cop. cop. Yep. Let us not forget. Um, Let's see if I have anything else here. Uh, the robots were designed very similar to the large fighting machines and the future battle scenes in the Terminator movie mm. um, when they were making this. Um, let's see. I got I got a couple if you need if you need some. Uh, there uh, was a- the last one I have is that uh, number five weighed two hundred and fifty pounds. Oh, wow. That machine actually weighed all together. 
Nice. Um, like a human body. Pretty, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a me. It's a it's a bearded geek. It's I, a bearded geek. I, I'm like more of a number four and a number five. <laughs> <laughs> From McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, so I, I got a couple here. It says uh, there were 15 working versions of Johnny Five on set. And while most worked fine, the fifth model actually went haywire. And it all, and it was kind of almost spooky, uh, the, said designer <laughs> Eric Allad, because the fifth one went haywire in Johnny Five. So, um, Ironic. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm imitating art, imitating life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Fisher Stevens kind of went all <laughs> out. He went all out for this role as Ben, who we didn't talk about him very much. He was probably the only other relatable character in this movie, mm -hmm. and he was a fake Indian. So good job to him. So <laughs> he had a. He, I loved his misquotings of U.S. Um, yeah. terminology. <laughs> yes, he he actually. When scientist create, creator Ben was rewritten as an Indian, Stevens was replaced by Bronson Pinchot, who uh, played Balky on Perfect Strangers. Uh, he actually ended up going to India, studied uh, Hindi, got into yoga, and in 1985 li actually lived with some Indian pe people and immersed himself. And that's kind of how he became a method actor and got his job back as the... Uh, Actor. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Just just the amount of amount of stuff that actors go through nowadays just to get a role in a movie that could that could make or break their career. So it could that really could have wasted his time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but I, I could I could never do it. I could never do something like that. Dedication. That was absolute hundred percent dedication. Yes. Uh, and two of the uh, robots actually gave their life for this film in the scene where they where Johnny Five jumped off of a bridge. Uh, two of them had to do it, and they when they landed, they totally disintegrated. So uh, that is really all I have as fun and interesting facts, I would uh, imagine, on this movie as well. So uh, I guess we can go ahead and get into what we actually thought and rate it. Um you know, Bebo, this was your movie. How about you go first? Um, for me, just because I liked, like I said, the I'm gonna call it the Wally factor for me. <laughs> Watching him just kind of learn how to, you know, do everything. I really like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um, and just for nostalgic purposes, I would probably give it a five out of ten for myself. Um. Mm -hmm. You know, it had some good things. It had a lot of bad things. Um, it's not necessarily something I don't know that if I'd recommend it to somebody. Um, I'd be more along the lines to recommend the sequel, which is something I would probably never really do. I did kind of like the sequel better than the first, to be <laughs> honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would probably put it around the five mark for me. Mikey, mm. what about you? Yeah, um, I'm I'm in the same ballpark. Um, I think the this is one movie where I can say that definitely the sequel was ten times better <clears throat> than the original. And I think you can even watch the sequel and not have to worry about the first one, like no. what happened mm -hmm. to him, mm -hmm. how he became who he became. They don't really go into that in the second one. It's all about city life and and him right. being in New York City. So it's a whole different story complex. So um, and it would be very that, easy to tell somebody he got struck by lightning, became self aware, and here's the sequel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a rundown in four seconds. Uh, <laughs> so, so this this video is actually way too long. Then, so it's yes. Good. <laughs> yes. Show him get struck uh, by lightning, become self aware, and then we'll go straight into the second one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, um, I, I think the storyline was there. And, and the, the movie and the story really centered around uh, Johnny Five. And, and that's kind of why we don't, uh, you know, we don't really attach ourselves and relate to the other characters because they were almost insignificant. Because if you, if you watch a lot of the movie, 
um, Johnny Five is by himself. There's there's not yeah. th- there are roles where they're together, but every time we see them together, they're always talking about him and what what he's doing. And and it started to get annoying when he kept saying he's alive, he's alive. He's alive. I said we fucking get it. I said I, we get it. You're alive. <laughs> yeah. we know. But they're trying to convince the whole movie. It's like they're trying to convince them not to destroy him because he's not that robot anymore. He's not a war machine like they created all five of them for. So being that now he's alive, you know, per se, um, <clears throat> it's that artificial intelligence role. You know, he's he's going to um, be able to live throughout his days and, and have like love interests and all that stuff. No, you're a machine. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I do like the, the storyline from start to finish. Uh, you know, again, like you said, the Wally effect where how he starts from a machine with just a machine war machine, basically, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all the way until how he has a conscience and, and he loves and um, he feels and that kind of stuff. And he actually creates that relationship with um, Ali Sheedy and um, Steve Gutenberg's characters. So I like that part of it, but it's not a um, it's definitely not a recommendable movie for me. It's kind of a like you said, it's quick, quick hit, and like you show them the character, and you're like, oh, you know, I remember that character from the '80s, but they might not remember it's Johnny Five. But um, you know, some things that kind of hit me is with the when the song "Who's Johnny" comes on, which actually I have playing at work right now. It's on our <laughs> on our uh, PA system, so it's kind of funny. I hear it on there, and I'm just like, "Who's Johnny?" She says, so I, yeah, so I start singing along. <laughs> So those are the kind of cool ones, uh, the, the kind of uh, cool memories, the little little bits that you take from the movie um, to remember the movie by, but not really want to go back and rewatch it. You watch it one or two times and you're kind of done. You really don't have to. Um, so memorable, yes. My uh, take on it, I think I'm going to give it more of a four just because I don't feel that it holds up now with the war mm. machine we're so far we're so far and so far advanced in machine making that even back then i think they could have done better yeah in the 80s they mm. could have done a lot better you know machines mm. should be indestructible not shoot them and then they die because <laughs> <laughs> the 11 million dollar machine and it's done in three seconds <laughs> it doesn't make any sense right yeah uh, but that's it yeah i, I give it a four I, i'm in the like ballpark on that one yeah, I think uh, I'm on line with Mikey there. Uh, f- about a four for me. Uh, like I said, I didn't connect with any character. I know the movie is supposed to be fo- centered and focused around Johnny Five, but you need that supporting cast to help him along. Yeah. And I don't feel like any of the cast was even inspired by this movie. I don't feel like they were into it. It felt very, they felt displaced and for me, that's don't make a good movie when you're, even though you have a great actor, like you could have a great actor in a movie, in any movie, and it mm-hmm. if they don't have the supporting cast, it's not going to be that great of a movie. I mean, they, it has to have a good story. It has to have a good supporting cast. There's a formula for a good movie, and this maybe had three or four components that didn't work. And it did. It just didn't work for me. Uh, Johnny Five was good. Uh, his his lines. Uh, the fake Indian was good, and everybody else just <laughs> just not good. Would I would I recommend this movie? No, like you said, if I was to recommend something, I'd be like, listen, like you said, you know, he was struck by lightning. He's now alive. He gained consciousness. <laughs> uh, he's self aware. Now watch go go watch Short Circuit two. Don't you don't need Short Circuit yeah. one. Go watch it's Short all you Circuit need. two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That that's uh really my thoughts on it. So uh, I do believe that does it for this episode of Back to the Retro Review. Like I said before at the beginning of the video, if you like this, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, thumbs thumbs up. Uh, watch tell it. Us, Let us know. Yes. Leave a comment. We'll, we'll be we'll interact with you. Yes, um, let us know what you want us to, you know, review. We're more than happy to do that. Just give yeah, us, you know, your thoughts or input on that. We're flexible. Input, 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 input. input. Yes, input. input. I need, we need input. 
We need input. Uh, so, on that note, for Mikey the Freak and Bebo, I am the Bearded Geek saying keep it retro, everybody. See ya, folks. See ya. <laughs>